hi guys good to talk to you again after such a long time a lot has changed since i last recorded a video and today for some reason i felt this strong urge to talk about something that's very personal and dear to me and hopefully god will allow me to talk about it i wanted to write it down first i wanted to have a better um video set up but I just said, no, today is the day to do it because in our faith as Shia Muslims and our Sunni brothers also believe in this is the day of Ashura. You can look it up. I'm sure you'll find much better explanations than what I can provide. But basically it is the day uh, when Imam Hussein, the grandson of our prophet, peace be upon, peace be upon him, was killed only 40 years after our prophet died because he single-handedly wanted to um, just stand for justice and what was right to him and he fought an army of 30,000 people he only had 72 companions with his whole family and his baby son they were all martyred within an hour uh, and to Muslims, he is the equivalent of a person who manifested love and his faith fully. And he sacrificed himself and all his family and all he had, his, not only his belongings, but the people who were most dear to him for the love of God. And um, as I said, you can find much more in-depth and better explanation online. Look up the day of Ashura or the name of Imam Hussein. But what I want to talk about today is not about him only. I feel like this year, we as Muslims have rituals for this very important day. We listen to songs about him. There is very deep, beautiful, meaningful poetry about him that we listen to every year. We go to our mosques. We give out food to the poor and just as remembrance of him among ourselves. I cook today too. But this year in particular um, had a very strange, interesting and honoring twist for me. And I felt like all the signs, maybe it was Imam Hussein himself direct me to it, love of God, grace of God, Holy Spirit, I don't know. But I feel like all the signs were directing towards Jesus for me. So today I want to talk about how I view Jesus now and how he entered my life and what I think about him and I have an invitation for everyone to well let's just talk about them by one 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 by one <laughs> um let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves so what happened to me is as a Muslim we believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as one of our top five prophets. We believe there were thousands and thousands of prophets, but among the top five, the ones who had the book, we call them the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, are amongst the, um, the ones who had a holy book, who had a holy prophet, and um, we encounter them now. I'm, I'm, we are all from Abrahamic backgrounds, and um, for some reason, of course, because his name is mentioned with respect and praise of God, God talks about his life, details of the miracles that he performed. Um, he talks about how he lived his life, he talks about how he was born, how he talked as an infant. He talks about his mother and he, um, God himself says, Jesus, peace be upon him, says salam to him and praises him in Islam. So as a Muslim, it was easy for me to um, not only respect him and accept him, but it was part of my religion. I was required to. And the consequence of that is naturally I had to respect and accept the, my fellow, my brothers and sisters in Christianity. Uh, but... This respect, first of all, always came from a source that was reliable to me and was dear to me and was trustworthy, which was the Quran. And it was out of the knowledge that was 
brought to me in the books and in history, usually given to me by Muslims. But all of a sudden, you know how when you fall in love, you, <laughs> when it happens, I've been in love for many years. And I'm sure you have. If you haven't, I ask God to grant you love. This is a perfect day, I think, to ask God for love. But when you fall in love, the process of falling in love is very strange. And when it happens, if it's if you're new to it, you don't know what's going on. You start feeling alive. You feel steered inside you. The world suddenly gets brighter, but you can't explain what's going on. Am I going crazy? Am I sick? Am I daydreaming? What's happening to me? And then suddenly you understand that you are in love. And because it comes so suddenly, there is no plan for it. There is no going back. There is no giving up on it. You cannot say this is not the right time. This is not the right place. There is no right time or right place for love. And when love comes, everything becomes right. Not only time and place, but everything. As Rumi, our great mystic poet, says... Love is the answer and the cure to all diseases and all problems. Uh, And this is what happened to me. Like, I was struck by the love of Jesus. I think it came to me during the month of Ramadan. And it made me very, very uncomfortable at first because... I felt what I felt. I couldn't deny it. Even if I denied it by words, words doesn't mean anything. My whole being was in love with Jesus. And um, at that time, prior to that time, as I said, my view of Christianity was like, oh yes, I mean, they have their own differences. They are lovely, respected people, but we are better. Of course, consciously and up front, I wouldn't even say to myself, but deep down, I always thought, although they will all go to heaven, maybe that's up to God, not up to me to judge. Although I think that there are parts that they misunderstood or misinterpreted, but we, what they have, we've got better. We've got the whole truth. We've got beautiful poetry because that was the area of my interest beautiful mysticism we have Rumi who can top Rumi I lived with Rumi for 10 years day and night Islamic mysticism is so profound that like today Rumi is the best-selling poet in the United States of America it's not just me saying that so I thought guys you I know what you have is nice but Uh, What we have is better. We top you. And look at us. We are the fastest growing religion in the world. So the world is becoming Muslim soon, whether you like it or not. Again, I mentioned I wasn't openly arrogant or closed-minded or prejudiced. What I manifested was, even to myself, was that I love these guys. These are godly people. My book directed me to love them. But this was deep down and now only now I realize it because now I am looking at it um, not through my brain, not through my knowledge, not through my mind, but through love. And in mysticism, love is not a feeling. Love is a mean of understanding, is a, a mean of obtaining knowledge, the most profound kind of knowledge. And I think I was honored by that. I'm not being modest about it. But it made me very, very uncomfortable. I was like, am I Christian? Because the love that I was feeling for Jesus was growing every day. And they were signs that kept directing me towards Christianity, towards these books entered my my life miraculously and humbled me so much. I got off my high horse and I was like, oh my God, I have been missing out on this. I have been depriving myself of this because before my way of research and getting to know these people was by um, watching debates. And the debates I watched, I think debates 
no matter what, no matter who the clergy is, who the scholar is, no matter how holy, God has forbidden us to debate the word jadal, I think. This is my personal opinion. You guys can disagree, but I think it is very, very, very difficult, close to impossible to avoid your ego while you are trying to prove yourself right and prove the other party wrong. And for example, from our monoistic understanding of Christianity, it's very easy to us to say, oh, Jesus was only the prophet of God. There is no Trinity. Jesus wasn't crucified. But we love him, we honor him, he is high. But what your base, what the Christian party is hearing is that you are attacking the core of their faith, whether it is wrong, right or wrong. I am not here to preach you about the truth about any religion right now because I'm not at that place. I'm not a clergy. And this is the exact reason why I've decided to make this video because now another type of a uh, more friendlier version of debates called friendly discussions or interfaith uh, relationships within churches or online. You can fight that. You can find <laughs> that Freudian sort of um, imams and rabbis and priests, reverends. They're talking very friendly in a very friendly manner about their differences, their similarities, just a friendly chat. And this is refreshing to watch. But what I am talking about is from the point of view of an ordinary person and nobody like myself and us, the nobodies, the non-clergy people, are 99.9% .9 of the world. So the future of the world, it only takes one person to think differently and to act upon love, to be able to reach to the souls of others to wake up other souls, to kindle uh, that love in the world. I am not claiming that I am that person I desire to be, and I hope I will be granted that grace. You see, even my lingo has changed to Christian lingo. Uh, but I would want to have a part in that. As Rumi says again, he says, do not say that all the people are fighting and what is my peace going to bring to the world. You are not one. You are a thousand. Kindle your own light. Kindle your own fire. <sighs> so you are not one but a thousand. If you, if we believe that Imam Hussein is the Ark of Salvation, he is the Ark of Salvation, not that he has the Ark of Salvation or a mean to guide you. He, His being is salvation. Your being can become that too. Why not? And if we believe that he manifested love, Christians and Muslims believe that Jesus did too. We can become that. The We believe that Jesus is the Messiah and he will come back. When God decides, his body will come back, but his spirit is alive and present. So is the spirit of Imam Hussein and every righteous man according to our scripture. So the spirit we can invite to our hearts and to our lives to be alive within us, to change us, to bring us the peace and beauty and uh the abundant love and joy that we are waiting someday they would bring us, they can present in our lives right now. They, they are waiting to give that to us. We just have to have the openness and the emptiness in our soul to be able to receive it. And when we're filled with answers, with ego, with, oh, I got this, I know this, with, I don't know, books to present to prove the other party wrong, there is no emptiness, there is no silence, there is no poverty, as the mystics said. As Prophet Muhammad says, my pride is in my poverty, my, my emptiness, my longing and my need for, for God himself, not from something from God. And um, so, yeah, it is very scary to open your mind and heart. We always talk about it what, when it happens to you. For me, it just happened to me. I didn't choose it. 
it's very scary because you are brought up with things that you hold very holy and very like there are areas that you shouldn't even talk like i used to cringe when i heard the word trinity like mm, okay nice good for you i don't want to deal with it i don't want to hear it that's my red line uh so when all of a sudden you feel this love for the other party and you feel honored and you feel touched by it it is scary it for me it was scary i felt like oh my god am i becoming christian <laughs> uh so most of us at this point would rather to either turn our backs or uh just ignore it just try to repent to god or find flaws and sins that has led up to this because these are words that i shouldn't be believing it but then i realized that i mean the essence of religion the when when jesus is praised and mentioned with details of his life in my book in my holy book god is inviting me to also love him and praise him and use him as an example and talk about his love I should be honored to love Jesus as I'm honored to love Imam Hussein. And their essence is the same. They said the same sentence. Jesus as Imam Hussein said the same sentence. Imam Hussein said, is there anyone who would help me? And so did Jesus to the disciples. He said, is there anyone who will help me? And they're asking us the same question. If we say yes, we are not saying yes to particular people or to particular way of thinking, the school of thought or a person. We're saying yes to the truth, to God, because this question is asked God knows how many times in our lives. And to my Christians, brothers and sisters, I want to say when you like when i talk about love of jesus to my christians brothers and sisters they immediately think that i want to convert to their religion and they're overjoyed or they're very with a good intention eager to invite me to their religion but what i'm saying is don't be afraid to love the other person to the point that you adore and admire the beautiful stories they believe in the values and virtues that they live by i watched a documentary about a very young nun who also died very young um with the name of sister claire if you if you look it up if you look up that um documentary i think it forever changed my life and i read some books that out of my love and respect for what they request in the book for not to be mentioned openly and publicly i will not name them but they forever changed my relationship with my god and at first when this happened i kept saying i said no 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 this can't be these guys should have maybe lived in an area geographically that were close to muslim mystics and maybe they copied off each other or maybe they were influenced by each other so i asked my friends who studied religion theology philosophy to find these traces for me because it was impossible to me we were the ones who were supposed to have this truth and this depth and beauty not them how can someone who believes in something that to me is not right is not the truth have reached a height of knowledge and salvation to be able to pierce my heart centuries later with such loud and profound truth that i cannot close my ears and say i didn't hear it or close my heart and say i didn't feel your love i felt their presence in my life and then i realized that this is the way we think this is our ego even when we we think we're doing it for the love of god or for the ummah, for the community for prophet muhammad we're defending our religion we are introducing it to other people we are proud of it or we humbly thank god that we are growing so much but yet if you are honest 
in our conscious, if we confront ourselves, we see, no, this is us serving our ego. We are happy that there is one more person added to our team. When we watch a debate, we are eagerly and excitedly watching to see if the imam would beat the rabbi or if he has a smarter answer that shuts them up and everybody looks at them in awe. That's the sole reason we watch these debates, really. We are not there to really learn because if you are there to really understand, I don't think it's possible even... I mean, this is a big sentence for me to say, but I don't think when we create that block of prejudice, even God's mercy, even God's grace cannot penetrating. Not that he cannot, but he will not. This is not his sunnah. You have to have an open door. You have to have that emptiness to be able to receive knowledge, not the way that you want to be gift wrapped or the the. The, the way you order from God's brochure that send me knowledge through my sources, through the things that I believe. When you open your heart, God will reach you in strange ways. And it's impossible to have fear and prejudice lead you and accept light and knowledge and truth to reach you. Because I think fear, if it's not fear of God, it is fear of shaitan most of the time and um yes so <laughs> i was influenced by people i was really touched by christians who celebrate the day of ashura with us who mourn for imam hussein who make documentaries about imam hussein like the documentary called for the love of hussein it's available on youtube too they give us their churches they invite us for talks to their churches for the friendly discussions they even change turn their churches in the month, month of muharram some of them do this whether in iran or in the us to give it to muslims to mourn for imam hussein and they mourn with us and we're always so inspired by them that we take pictures we post it online we are proud to watch these great people but are we willing to do that for them are we willing to proudly talk about the love of jesus to proudly quote from their bible from their books are we or are we afraid or feel like this is not my duty they have their own beautiful ceremonies and preachers to do that to each his own this is this is my faith this is my religion i'm here to defend it truth really doesn't need any defenders when you present truth to anyone it is enough by itself it's self-sufficient that's why when the disciples and the pupils of uh imam sadiq were asked to were asked they asked him how can we present islam how can we present the Quran to the other faiths and other countries. What should we say? In what manner should we approach them? Imam Sadaq alayhi salam says, please don't. <laughs> Just present the truth. Just present the Quran and that is enough. So, yeah, and you know, now I have a baby, a baby girl. When I go somewhere to a party with her and she's offered sweets or candies, she always wants to take the whole dish. She never gets one or two, no matter how much you instruct her or punish her <laughs> or tell her off. And I think some of the behaviors of um, kids we can look up to and we can use as an example for us that if you deprive yourself of this beauty that is around you if you don't take it all taking it all in doesn't mean accepting it or converting to it or betraying your own faith you're not betray betraying anyone god mentioned every prophet in the quran not every prophet but the ones that we know today and we see around us to give you a green light that it's okay not only it's okay but you are doing what god is doing by praising them and accepting them and loving them and i hope for all of you to be able to 
feel this without fear and to um this is me making this video is my way of openly and publicly confessing that i love jesus you guys be my witness and it's an honor to talk about him to quote the stories of his life and just to receive his grace grace is a concept that we also have in islam but the focus on it in christianity is more bold i guess uh, and to me my conception before was that christians are very too lax you know too easygoing that someone else died for you on the cross and now you're free to do whatever you want and don't worry you'll go to heaven no matter what but when when now i'm reading their resources and listening to them talk about it i see such humble beautiful point in this that is completely the opposite of what i thought what christians believe is that their deeds can never be good enough or complete enough and their being as sinful creatures is not ever going to be perfect or clean enough to be worthy of receiving god's grace or to receiving perfection or heaven or god's grace so they will always need extra help and that is the most humble thing i've ever heard um the same thing we believe in islam that you cannot reach that height god god's love perfection salvation whatever you want to call it that's height and that end point is not a prize is not a reward given to you for your hard work because no matter how good of a person you are or even if you pray your whole life it will never even come close to the blessings of god to any of them even the ones that are simplest in our minds so i want to end with just reading you one beautiful passage from a a book that is written even before islam came by saint dennis um and you be the judge guys you be the judge of our similarities this is about tanzi about how you take away god's attributions because god lies secondly he's shy there is no one like him and then you're le left what you're left with is darkness not light but the darkness that only god can penetrate and hold your hand and teach you more so it's a short passage i hope you enjoy it as much as i did the title is god is the cause of them all god who is the cause of them all is none of the things we can understand and so we who have begun our denials and removals by reaching the highest of the things we can understand say that god is neither soul nor angel he has no imagination or opinion or reason or understanding nor is he reason or understanding nor can he be described or understood moreover and here we are moving from high things to low he has no number order greatness smallness equality likeness unlikeness he neither stands still nor moves keeps silence nor speaks and if we turn back to the highest matters to end our denyings there we assert that he has no virtue nor is he virtue or light he is not life or substance or age or time we can understand nothing about him nor is he knowledge or truth or kingdom or wisdom or singularity or unity or godhead godhead or goodness nor in the sense that we understand spirit is his spirit there is no sonship or fatherhood nor anything else that is known by us or by anyone else he is none of the things that have no being none of the things that have being none of the things that are known know him for what he is nor does he know the things that exist for what they are in themselves but only for what they are in him nor is there any way by which we can reach him through reason or understanding 
He has no name. We cannot know him. He is neither darkness nor light, error nor truth. Speaking generally, there is no affirmation we can make of him. Nothing we can deny of him. When we attribute something to him or deny any or all of the things which he is not, we do not describe him or abolish him, nor in any way that we can understand do we affirm him or deny him. For the perfect and unique cause of all is of necessity beyond compare with the highest of all imaginable heights, whether by affirmation or denial. And this surpassing non-understandability is ununderstandable is ununderstandably above every affirmation and denial. Let me try this last sentence one more time. And this surpassing non-understandability is ununderstandably above every affirmation and denial. May the love of Imam Hussein and the love of Jesus be with you through your life in this world and the other. And may their spirit be present in your life. Thank you for listening to me. Goodbye.